Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to show you how to create and apply filters so that you can see a subset of your Excel data. I'll also show you how to save the filters for viewing at a later date. We'll create custom views. Filtering beginning in Excel 2007 has been dramatically improved thanks to the addition of date filters, text filters, and number filters. Now I'll demonstrate date, text, and number filters in a few minutes. First, we want to make sure that we have our data set up so that we can apply filters. First, we want to make sure that the top row of our data set has clearly defined column headers, clearly defined field headers. The easiest way to do that is to select the labels in the top row of our data and apply bold formatting. Next, we want to make sure that we have no uh, uh, hidden or, or blank columns, no blank rows in our data set. So when Excel finds the first blank column, that defines one dimension of the data set. I'll use the keyboard shortcut Control End. So down here, row 505 is where we end our data set. When it finds the first blank row, the first blank column, Excel says, ha ha, that's the extent of our data set. Now, with one and only one cell selected in our data set, go to the Data tab on the ribbon and apply the filter. We see these nice little drop-downs which will give us filter options. Now, if you're using Excel 2003, follow the steps but go to the Data menu and apply Auto Filter. Auto Filter no longer exists in Excel 2007 and later. All right, let's see what kind of filtering we can do and especially how we can apply a date filter. So when I click in a field that contains dates, in addition to seeing the unique values in the field, I also have a series of date filters. Now in addition to equals before and after, I can filter for this week, last week, next month, this month, last month, or I can go in and select a specific period. So all dates in a period. If I want to see the uh, results for March only, now I filtered the records so that I'm only showing the records that meet the criteria. They are in the month of March. So notice the coloring over here on the rows. That means that the other rows that did not match or meet the criteria have been filtered from view. And when I want to see all of the records, I return to the uh, column that has been filtered. And an easy way to do that is now say clear the filter from date. Now product and, uh, and sales rep both contain text. So I can apply text filters over here. Now here we again, we see all the unique values. One way that you can select is just clear select all and then select the records that you wish to see. So now I have those records and of course I can come back here and I can sort them. So filtering and sorting are on the same drop down menus. Now let's come in and see what we could do with text filters. So I want to clear this filter and now let's take a look at some of the text filters. So I can come over here and say it begins with, it ends with, it contains. So a text string, just even the letter A for example, or it begins with C. We also have in all versions of Excel the custom filter. So down here with the custom auto filter we have a dialog box. So we see we can say equals, does not equal, greater than or less than and either type in or choose from one of the drop down values. And we have and so that both conditions must be met or or either condition um, must be met to show the filter. Alright now let's come over here and take a look at number filters. So revenue contains currency it's the sales. Let's take a look at what we could do with numeric filters. In addition to equals does not equal and in addition to top 10 which has been available and I'll demonstrate shortly we have these two new filters above average below average. So let's apply the above average number filter. Now what we see down here if I come down here to the status bar 244 of the 501 records were found. So 244 records are above average. Now let's uh, remove that filter and let me demonstrate the top 10. What we can do here with top 10 it's one of our numeric filters, is that we understand that top 10 is a generic term. It doesn't have to be top, 
it could be bottom it doesn't have to be 10 it could be 5 it could be 25 and it doesn't have to be items it could be percent so let's apply a filter where we want to see the bottom 10 percent of our sales so bottom 10 percent click OK and now we have those records and of course I could again come back here and I could sort them from smallest to largest and here we see in the status bar 50 of 501 records were found to be in the top or the bottom 10 percent let's again come back here and remove that filter now one problem with the top 10 what you must understand is a hierarchy so top 10 applies to the entire data set so for example if I went through and I selected Irving first let's go through and do Irving and again let's do it this way we'll just select Irving and now if I want to apply a top 10 filter it's not going to be the top 10 in Irving's filter it's going to be the top 10 in the uh, generic so let's come through here and we'll do a top 10 and I'll do the top 10 items click OK that's you see there there are none of Irving sales met the criteria they didn't fall into the overall top 10 so again we want to be aware of what that hierarchy is so I'm going to remove that and I'm going to remove this filter over here now let me show you how we can save these uh, filters as custom views first I want to create a custom view called normal view so I have my filters applied now I come over here to the view tab on the ribbon and come over here in the workbook views apply a custom view so these are three that I already have created I want to create a new one with no filters and I'm just going to call this normal so it will make it easy for me to come back to normal view all right let's again go over here to custom views and let's see and in April so I highlight it and click show so here I have a filter for the sales rep is equal to Ann and the month of the sales were in April if I want to come back to the normal view then I highlight and again that's a best practice I encourage you to create a view called normal view it will make it so much easier for you to come back now if I want to remove the filters they're a toggle I just come back here into the data menu and take off the filter now new in Excel 2007 we have tables they have been greatly improved and I love tables however if you like views you will not be able to use custom views if you have a table on any worksheet in your workbook so over here to make this a table I select one cell come to the insert tab on the ribbon say table here's the dimensions for my data set click OK the drop downs are added but now notice that if I try to apply one of the filters on the view menu it's grayed out and not just on the table tab but also over here on the data set you see it's grayed out so if that's the case or if you've inherited a workbook and you want to use custom views you'll have to remove the table at least from that worksheet one way to do it select one cell in your table come up here into the contextual table tools design and we want to say convert to a range confirm it and now we have our custom views restored so if I come back here go to the view tab of the ribbon now my custom views are back and they're available so there you've seen how to create and apply filters you understand the hierarchy of using top 10 and then filtering within that we can use the new date filters we can use text filters and we can use numeric filters and I'll see you in the next lesson